In previous slumps, for example in 1974, economic slowdown triggered falls in company earnings, prompting investors to sell their shares. Prices only began to rise again as the world's economies revived. Not so in 2013. In the United States, the Dow Industrial Average has risen nearly 15% since the start of the year. Japan's Nikkei Index has risen by over 37%, and the UK's FTSE is up over 11%. But the US economy is estimated to be growing at only 2.5% a year, Japan's by only 0.2%, and Britain's by 1.2%. Exuberance can't be the driving factor, so what is? If we are entering into a period where we expect very anemic growth for, say, five to ten years, and that we expect interest rates to remain, remain low for five to ten years, and that therefore we expect bond markets to have yields that are very low, then I think that the earnings yield on equities becomes more and more attractive in that environment. Some stockbrokers think that share price indexes here in London and in New York could rise by a further 20 or 30 percent over the next few months as more and more investors adopt the strategy of buying into equities. But what are the risks that, after the surge in the stock market price, it will collapse again? Biggest risks at the moment would be any disappointments in US economic recovery, more than an expected slowdown in Chinese growth, something going wrong in the Eurozone, such as a country having to exit, or general in investor sentiment just starting to wonder whether we've come too far too fast in the first few months of 2013. One thing which could really harm share prices is if leading economies like America's start to motor again. Governments would then start raising interest rates back up to their pre-crisis levels. And that would make other investments, like bonds, look much more attractive than shares. Jeremy Howell, BBC News.